Hello everybody, um, this is Marty with Marty's Moccasins and Things. Um, we are going to be doing some tutorials and we are going to start with the very, very basics. So, the art of wire wrapping. This art is over 4,000 years old and basically it is to take something that you want to hang up somewhere, whether it be around your neck, around your wrist, on your finger, in a window, over the car mirror, whatever. It is a way to take wire and turn something that doesn't necessarily hang up into something that does hang up. Here are some examples of my work. Whether it doesn't have a hole like these first two, or it does have a hole like this one. I like to hide my holes. Very bad, but there you can probably see the hole. So some are easier than others. But in order to do this, there are a few things that you're going to need for the very basics. And there's going to be some things that are nice to have. Of course, the first thing you're going to need are is wire and the cheapest easiest to do is copper wire you can do uncoated copper wire or you can do coated copper wire the uncoated copper wire can turn people's fingers or necks green um, it is very pretty and it's relatively cheap the coated wire doesn't turn anybody's fingers or necks green and it also doesn't oxidize so bare copper wire will turn dark over time the coating on this wire keeps that from happening now about wire this is I get most of my wire from para wire but not all of it this is 20 gauge wire. Gauges are odd because the higher the number, the smaller the wire. This is 16 gauge wire. And you can see the marked difference in that. And then this is 26 gauge wire. Doesn't show up real well. There's 16, there's 26, so you have to remember the bigger the number, the smaller the wire. And it comes in a variety of colors. There's copper, there's silver. Uh, this is one of my favorites. This is vintage bronze. I just love this color. So wire it is. Now, something that you can do is you can go to your local hardware store when you're first starting out and buy crafting wire there. That crafting wire is going to be what they call half hard. Wire comes in hard, half hard, and dead soft. I don't have any half hard wire with me, but basically half hard wire is you can bend it fairly easily and you can straighten it out fairly easily hard wire pretty much you bend it and you're never going to get it straight again and then you have dead soft wire that is very very easy pliable to spin around and also to straighten back out again dead soft wire is what you will go to shortly after half hard wire just because it is so much easier but it is a little more expensive so while you're practicing you might want to use the cheaper stuff at the hardware store and also using half hard wire strengthens your fingers so when you start with the dead soft wire it moves really easily a few tools that you're going to need well first you're going to need a workspace like I have here this towel is on my desk, my regular desk at home, uh, the desk I pay my bills at, the desk I do all of my administrative stuff at. I just have this towel. It's a 15 by 15 
towel that I use it keeps the stuff from bouncing around too much and if you're working with beads it keeps them from rolling away and you can use your dining room table your desk or your designated craft area if you have one so some of the tools you're going to need you have wire so you're going to need wire cutters these are called flush cutters they can be found in the tool section in Walmart or any hardware store you can also get them in hobby stores they are fairly cheap this will cut your dead soft wire but you do not want to use these to cut your half hard wire because it will nick these little blades and then your pliers will become useless instead you want to use these these, I call these side cuts, um, they're just wire cutters. You can also get them at any hardware store. And they are used to cut your half hard wire, your, if you're making earrings, your head pins, and any other hard wire should be cut with these because they are built to handle it. These are called chain nose pliers. These are what mechanics call needle nose pliers, except they are completely smooth right here. There are no teeth. If you use regular needle nose pliers with teeth, you will scratch your wire to pieces. So these are chain nose pliers. You can get these at any hobby store. I know you can get them at Walmart as well, but that is definitely a necessity. And if you're going to make anything loops round, these are round nose pliers. They are also at any craft store, Walmart in the craft section. They come down to a fairly small point. And as you can see, they're round, so you can get different size loops by going up the space. And if you have all those tools and some wire, you just need something to wrap like this pretty little amethyst. He has a hole in him so it makes it fairly easy to wrap. There are thousands of wrapping tutorials online. Mine are not the only ones. Other tools that you might like to have, these are called nylon pliers. These help you straighten out your wire and make it smooth as glass. You just take your wire, stick it in there, and just run it down here a couple of times. And that wire is straight and pretty, so you can start your project with straight wire. Because crooked wire will make it look, I mean, sometimes crooked wire makes it look pretty cool. There are also bale making pliers. These are, give you six different sizes, if you can tell, there we go, that's better. Gives you six different sizes of loops you can make for your bales. Making bales will be my next video because you have to have something to hook to whatever you're going to put. This is your bale. So I'm going to teach you a few different ways to make these so that you can hang your piece. And these, I just happened onto these. Sometimes you have to tighten your wire. And sometimes you want to do it decoratively. The chain nose pliers work well for that as well. You get a hold of the wire and you twist it. And it makes a nice little curve or a loop. But these are wider. So if you're on the face of the stone, you can make a much wider bend when you twist and it's not quite so small. So there we have it. The very, very basics of what wire wrapping is and what you need to start. And good luck. And my next video, as I said, will be about bales. So if you like this video, go ahead and like it. Uh, subscribe to help me support my channel and I am not monetized at all so 
just subscribing just gives you access to all my videos and any new coming videos. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.